evening for Marshall Falk. The UCLA defense was all over him. No gain there. Up the middle and uh, nothing doing. Later the trap play and that nets two yards. Falk 53 yards rushing on only 19 carries. Scoreless in the first. Wayne Cook hits J.J. Stokes for 36 yards. He stays in bounds. What a nice play he makes to complete the 36-yard touchdown. 7-0 UCLA. Same score later in the quarter. San Diego State quarterback Tim Gutierrez never saw it coming. He is hammered. Shane Jasper gets it, but look at Marshall Falk with a good hustle here as he catches the big fella from behind. Bruins would score anyway to make it 14-0. Now 24-7 UCLA in the third. Wayne Cook again to J.J. Stokes, who turned down the hometown Aztecs four years ago to play at UCLA. Three touchdowns for him, 164 yards receiving. Stokes was the man in a 52-13 whipping of San Diego State. The Bruins improved to 16-0-1 against the Aztecs. Ball effectively. Yeah, right. You can't against Stanford here. Clint Johnson for the Irish. After Stanford had got back within two touchdowns in the third quarter, Johnson brings it out from six yards deep. Great blocking. He gets the picket fence there. And the kicker, no. No, the kicker's not going to get him. 34-13 Irish with 6.15 to go in the third. 19 kicks return for touchdowns in the host era. Still in the third. Irish up by two touchdowns again. McDougal on the option to leave Beckton, who wasn't supposed to play. 41-20 Irish. Uh, if you're Stanford, you should have taken away the option and found a way to make Notre Dame throw the football because obviously they can run the option offense. Stenstrom would try to bring the Cardinal back in the fourth quarter. But a long afternoon, Sean Wooden, the acrobatic INT in the end zone of Notre Dame's defense, plays well enough to win the offense, totally dominant against Stanford, 48 to 20. Irish continue the excellent record on the road. Clint Johnson, again, the big play to spark the team. Miami taking on Georgia Southern, a 1-double-A team. The Hurricanes trying not to look ahead to Florida State. Three zip canes in the second. Donnell Bennett, a five-yard run, makes it 10 nothing. Southern would hang around. 16 zip in the third quarter. Larry Jones fumbles the football. Alex Mash, good name for a defensive player, picks it up and rumbles in. 16 7 Canes now. Right after that, Miami would answer. Ryan Collins, who relieved Frank Costa, looks for Jonathan Harris. Collins shows the ability, not the great arm. He lofted it up there, but Harris run on, runs under it there. 23 7 Hurricanes. And they continue to pull away, adding a touchdown later to make it 30 to 7 as Miami points toward the Seminoles in Tallahassee. 2:27 to play in the ball game. We'll keep you posted. Duke and Tennessee. You knew it would be a long day for the Dukies as they took on number 21. He's Schuler. Early in the first quarter, Schuler, 17 yards to Craig Faulkner, seven zip Tennessee. The defense adding to the score in the second quarter. The special teams come in. Big John Kruger, the kick blocked by Greg Johnson. It's 37 6 volunteers. And John Bexford, the extra point. Why are we showing you that? It's a Tennessee record. 87 consecutive PATs for Bexford. 38 6 at that point. Schuler back to work. Short pass to Charlie Garner. Short pass, long run, 50 yards. You get the idea. Duke unable to slow down Tennessee at all. They are mesmerized in Knoxville. 52-19 is the final as the Vols go to 4-1. and one. Schuler, 226, four touchdowns. He had one interception. Houston clobbered Baylor. First quarter, Jimmy Klingler, Sherman Smith. Two-yard pass. Cougars up seven zip. Klingler, three touchdowns and an interception. Toward the end of the first quarter, Klingler looking for Rod Peters. A fade route. He backs up, catches it. Now it's 14-3. And then Lamar Smith, one of his big runs. He had 115 yards rushing, 49 yards receiving. And Kim Helton, his first win as coach of the Cougars, 24-3 is the final as Baylor drops to 3-2. That's a blow for the Southwest Conference. Baylor appeared to be a couple of weeks ago a bowl team in the, in the uh, Southwest Conference, but now it's starting to slip away. Well, I was going to talk about Tennessee and Oregon. Well, Oregon was 30 <laughs> nothing. I can forget that one. Tennessee is hot. If you have a ticket for that game in Birmingham, October the 16th, Tennessee, Alabama, sell it. It's going to be worth a lot of money. That's a great football team, Go Tennessee. To the game. Go to the game. No, sell it. Make more money. <laughs> yeah, you don't need any of that. How about Notre Dame? Lou Holtz, classic matchup this week between Bill Walsh and Lou Holtz. Holtz kept saying all week how poor his football team was and said they couldn't run the option. Well, you saw on the tape just a moment ago how well Kevin McDougal can run the option and how they pounded Stanford, as Coach said they would, pound them, pound them, and they did it. 
I mean, I hate to kick Stanford's defense when they're down, but oh. us three, we could run the option and be successful. You, you'd be the back. Uh, we're going to come back, talk about Florida State <laughs> and Georgia Tech. The Seminoles just are more frightening every game. Charlie Ward and company, they have struggled against Tech last year. Well, this was a struggle for about 25 minutes or so before they kicked it into another gear. And a reminder, Steve Tannehill and the Gamecocks coming up against the Tide at the bottom of the hour. This college football scoreboard is presented by Residence Inn by Marriott, the Extended Stay Hotel. They're getting ready to crank up 2001 on the sound system. Carolina fans hoping that won't be the highlight of the evening as they try to up in Alabama coming up in about 20 minutes. Back to the scores now. Number one, Florida State. In past years, the Seminoles in this position might have looked ahead to Miami. They might have started to believe all of the press clippings and believe how good they were. Not this year. Not with Bobby Bowden having leaders like Charlie Ward and Derek Brooks to keep things settled down. They struggled early in this ball game against Georgia Tech, but then Ward kicked it into gear. He finds Lonnie Johnson, the tight end, five-yard touchdown. It's 10 zip. Later in the second quarter, time running down in the first half. Ward to Kez McCorvey, 16 yards. Bentley missed the extra point. His seventh, they trampled the trooper right there. He's missed seven PATs this year, though. That's a concern. It's the only concern. Ward right there, he picked up the blitz, and Warwick Dunn, the touchdown in Florida State, in little more than a half, scored 51 points, pitched their third shutout of the year, and allowed Georgia Tech just 110 yards total offense. That's the lowest total allowed since 1980 when they held a winless BC team to less yards. And led once again, as you said, by Charlie Ward. You see his numbers, the touchdown. More importantly, though, this guy's playing smart. And for the fourth time this season, he set out the fourth quarter. And Miami, of course, next week for Mr. Ward. Now, just down the turnpike there, Mississippi State and Florida. Todd Jordan, the great play-action fake. Eric Moulds is open. Brilliant catch, 63 yards. Mississippi State up by four in the third quarter. Jordan was brilliant, but on the ensuing kickoff, Jack Jackson takes momentum back for Florida and takes the kickoff back, weaving his way through the Bulldogs, 100 yards. Gators back on top, 24-21. Yes, I'm, let's run this way. Good idea. Danny Werfel was brilliant. In his second career start to Chris Doring, who makes the diving catch. The Collingsworth will look alike there. Three touchdown catches. Florida rolls 38-24. And Werfel, the redshirt freshman and the former walk-on Doring, hook it up, Lee. Can you believe it? Can this Spurrier coach quarterbacks or what? He starts out with a guy named Terry Dean. Now he's got Werfel. 449 yards, three touchdowns. Doring is a great receiver. Their problem is defense at Florida. And Rhett ran for 122 yards. Ohio State and Northwestern, no problems on defense for the Buckeyes or offense today. Butler by Note puts them up 13-6 in the second quarter. Wildcats couldn't get anything going on the ground. Chuck Robinson hammered by Big Daddy Dan Wilkinson. Greg's guy. Only 86 yards rushing for the Wildcats. Now some trickeration here. From the split end position, Joey Galloway. Nine-yard run. And the Buckeyes, of course, have said if it was a debate, they had a Northwestern. Wasn't a debate. It was emphatic. 51 to 3, 18 in a row over the Wildcats for Ohio State. Oklahoma and Iowa State. Not a good day for Bob Utter, the Cyclone quarterback. Not a good year for Mr. Utter either. <laughs> Second quarter of the Sooners. They are number one in the country in turnover ratio. And the bad handoff creates the fumble. Aubrey Beavis jumping on the football. Sooners up 17 7. Third quarter. Cale Gundy, Coach Switzer, they're running the wishbone right there. And Gundy gets it in. Oklahoma, 24-7. Gundy sets a school record for total offense, 4,926 yards as Iowa State drops to 1-4. And, and the Sooners, I'd say they're a quiet, unbeaten team at 4-0. Iowa and Michigan. Tyrone Wheatley in the big house and still very much in the Heisman race should Ward have even one bad game. Wheatley, the huge hole, five-yard run, seven-zip Wolverines. Later in the first quarter, Wheatley, the screen pass from Collins. Fake right. Runs left. Look at the explosion right there. Forget about it. 14-0 Michigan. They rolled 24-7. Wheatley, now third in Michigan history with 35 touchdowns. He's going to hold the season record and the career record in touchdowns right before he's done. This guy's amazing. What a great athlete. You see the 202 yards. 113 of those were rushing. In the fourth quarter, he's cheering on senior Ricky Powers, trying to get him to do well. That's a class act. North Carolina, after the big win against NC State last week, Trying to get back up against UTEP. Big day for Leon Johnson. Two-yard touchdown run, but the Tar Heels trailed much of this game. Miners had some bad luck here. Bracey Walker recovers the fumble, takes it the other way. 36 yards, perfect bounce. That would set up 
a third quarter touchdown. And Johnson was the story. Four touchdowns today. And North Carolina in a wild ball game. Got off to a terrible start, fell behind. But Johnson brings them back 45-39. They win against the Miners, 106 yards for Johnson. Stanisak, 170 yards, but he did have two interceptions. Virginia clobbers Ohio U with the nation's longest losing streak. Cavaliers are 5-0. Simeon Willis, second straight game that he's broken his own career record for passing yards in a ball game. Let's go back to Florida State. You mentioned the leadership a while ago. The thing that really impresses me about the Seminoles this year is that they play great, not good, great football regardless of the level of competition, and that's something most teams can't deal with. We saw Miami struggle a little bit today with Georgia Southern. Let's talk about another team in Florida. Florida, their defense. Can you believe this? Mm -hmm. Shuler throws five touchdown passes. Mississippi State, that's right, a team that runs the ball, gets over 400 yards passing. If Florida doesn't do something about their pass defense, November, Florida State will kill them, and, oh, yeah. and they'll kill oh, them yeah. in the swamp. They, they made Todd Jordan a Mississippi yeah. State look like Dan Marino. I'm telling you. All right, we're going to come back. Still more to talk about a great ball game in the Big East. There were a couple of great ones in the Big East. Syracuse, B.C. in the Dome was one of them. Crazy caroms. This one went right down to the final couple of minutes. And a reminder, in about 15 minutes, Antonio Langham and that tie defense getting ready for South Carolina. Our excitement, live on ESPN. It's off to the final short track of the season. Rusty Wallace has been the dominant short track force all year. Can he continue? Plus, the points battle is tighter than ever. Earnhardt, Wallace, Martin, Jarrett, it's anybody's championship. Watch the Tyson Holly Farms 400 tomorrow afternoon at 1 Eastern, live on ESPN. And welcome back. Syracuse and Boston College met today in the Carrier Dome. Two teams that have been a little bit disappointing. Among the national championship contenders from the preseason, Syracuse has been the least impressive. But Tom Coughlin, the Syracuse alum, the captain of the 67 team, knew the Eagles had never won inside the Carrier Dome airlock. Trailing, they go to a flea flicker here. Foley to Clarence Cannon, 48 yards. The Eagles are up 10-7 in the fourth quarter. The Cuse by three until Darnell Campbell vaults in. BC led by four. Under two minutes to go. Syracuse driving for the winning touchdown. When the crazy carom and Graves pass is picked off by Brian Howlett. Look out, coach. Here comes the ice bath. BC's first ever win in the Dome, 33-29. And Syracuse now a loss and a tie. The first time in history they've lost a ball game when scoring 29 points or more. One stat, not in Graves' situation there, he was sacked five times. Foley's 423 yards, a great job. Marvin Graves is playing himself out of the Heisman. Pete Schuler now is the number two quarterback in the Heisman, in my opinion. He thought the ground game might do it for the Eagles instead of it was the passing game. AM and Texas Tech in the third quarter. AM up 17 6 already, and Rodney Thomas vaults up and over. Next game, they will get running mate Greg Hill back from the suspension. But meanwhile, Leland McElroy looked good on the pass from Corey Pullig. He takes it in. AM led 31 6. Thomas ran for two touchdowns, 108 yards. Tech held to just 63 yards. The bam and shoot offense held to six points as AM goes to three and one in Texas Tech. Explosive offense, but they are one and four in the season. Virginia Tech and West Virginia, eight minutes to play. Virginia, West Virginia down 13 8, fourth and two. Jake Kelsner, not known as a runner, but watch the little move right here on the wet rug. He does get the first down. Now it's second and goal. And Rodney Wooder busts it in, 14-13. Then, Ryan Williams, a chance to win it with a field goal. It's going to be good. No, it's not. It fades off to the right. Mountaineers hold on, win it 14-13 over Frank Beamer. This has been a very competitive, exciting series in recent years. We thought it might be higher scoring. West Virginia, Louisville next week at home, and they are still unbeaten. NC State and Clemson. Ken Hatfield seem unimpressive. Until today, Patrick Sapp become an effective passer. Finds Marcus Hinton. Err, not going to get him as Hinton goes airborne and hits the pylon. 43 yards, puts the Tigers up, sevens it. It was 20-0. They were dominating until NC State got back in the game, a chance to win it. But the pass is broken up at the goal line in the final seconds by Tim Jones, who also had an interception to set up a touchdown and 11 tackles. And Clemson, despite the trouble, up to 3-1 and one on the season. Arkansas and Georgia. Talking about trouble, let's talk about the dogs. Eric Zier does hit Terrell Davis for a one-yard touchdown, and the dogs led 10-7, but the Razorbacks would come back in the fourth quarter. Barry Lunny. They did not execution well. He runs into his guard on the option, but then weaves through tacklers 
gets in the end zone, and the Razorbacks win it 20 to 10. Georgia, worst conference start in history. They are 0 and 4 in the SEC. A 91 yard touchdown run was called back for Georgia. It was just that kind of a day. Memphis State and East Carolina. Chris Hester at the helm in the first quarter. Hands off to Junior Smith. They call me Junior. 52 yards for the touchdown, 7-zip East Carolina, 146 yards on the ground for Smith. The Memphis State would come back. It's 14-7. Then Matthews to Isaac Bruce and makes a nice diving catch. Same drive. Steve Matthews to John Tweet Martin. Tweet with the sweet grab, 21-7 Memphis State. They would have gone to roll from there, 34-7, ever since Marcus Crandall got hurt for the Pirates. They have not been able to mount much offense in Memphis State. Up to three and two now. TCU and Oklahoma State, 27-22. The Cowboys win. They will take on Nebraska Thursday night at home right here on ESPN. Big Ten, Illinois, first victory of the season for Lou Tepper's club, 28-10 over Purdue. The Boilermakers have scored only 17 points combined in their three losses. Both teams are one and three. Kansas beats Colorado State. Sunny Lubick's team has improved, but the schedule just too tough as they continue to lose to good teams on the road. Missouri and Southern Methodist tie at 10. Jeff Handy, six interceptions in the last couple of games. He threw two today. SMU is tied late. They had the lead in Columbia. Sorry, Craig. In the whack, Wyoming wins on the front range, 31 to 18. The Cowboys up to 4 1. And Ryan Yarbrough, with that 200 yard receiving game, now has five in his career, and that's a new. NCAA record. Howard Twilley had the old record. Cincinnati 22-15 winners over Tulsa as the Bearcats go to 3-2. They snap the nine-game road losing streak. Steve Tannehill did not have a good night. Back to pass. And he's picked off by Sam Shade in the third quarter. Tannehill threw two interceptions on the night. Tannehill's mistake led to this Alabama score as Sherman Williams, not a tank, but a plane, flies in the end zone. Second TD of the night. Bam up 17 zip. Williams goes airborne again. Watch the hit leveled by Tony Watkins, but Bama wins the final 17 to 6. Sherman Williams, 106 yards on 23 carries.